We're well known throughout the world for the areas of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. So pharmacokinetics is a description of how the body handles drugs. Pharmacodynamics is what the drug does to the body, the actions of the drug. So we do experimental research in the laboratories. We do theoretical development and we associate with clinicians and pharmaceutical companies to analyze large sets of data. I've had support from the National Institutes of Health for 40 years to study corticosteroids, the master hormones of the body. So we examine all aspects of how they work, their distribution in the body, their binding to receptors, their controls of genes, and their control of metabolic and anti-inflammatory effects in the body. To describe all of this, we need mathematical models. Monoclonal antibodies are the biggest growth area for therapeutic agents. Many companies are developing antibodies to treat all sorts of conditions, and our department has a center for protein therapeutics with several faculty that specialize in studying antibodies. In my laboratory, we work on the use of mathematical modeling to guide the development of new drugs. And one of the main things that we do is to try to work on physiologically based modeling to predict antibody pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. So these antibody drugs are designed to bind very specifically to human proteins, and when you study them in animals, they just don't bind in the same way and they don't elicit the same effects. So what our approach is, is to use mathematical models where the parameters can be used to represent how the protein is expressed in humans, how it's turned over in humans, and then how the antibody binds to it in humans. And then we think in some, the mathematical models provide a much better representation of humans than do the animals, and then we'll predict safety and efficacy in a much better way. The future for predicting antibody pharmacokinetics, I think, will be to focus on inter-individual variability in disposition. So understanding better how co-administered drugs or disease, gender, smoking status, how these factors influence antibody pharmacokinetics. As we understand these uh, sources of inter-individual variability, I think we'll be better able to predict what will happen in individuals than what we're able to do now. What I have been doing since last uh, half a decade or so is working on novel molecules like antibody drug conjugates. The reason they are complex molecules because they are small molecules attached to large molecules. So one need to understand the PK and PD of both small and large molecules. It's so complex a molecule it's really hard to get gut feeling on their behavior and you need a quantitative framework like the PK-PD model we are developing to actually integrate all the different parts of that. You can use all the prior information you have obtained about this molecule in a quantitative framework and then assemble this information and then use it to decide a target to target for your disease or molecule to choose to target the disease a priori without actually conducting any experiments. And then once you have done this kind of due diligence before even you synthesize molecule, it minimizes your chances of failure and enhances your chances of clinical success. So we see these models being a virtual mathematical models which gives you virtual physiology and virtual pathological disease orientations. The next frontier is to actually involve this in all different stages of drug development, which is starting from target selection to lead selection to preclinical studies to clinical trial design. Today, we have a lot of new targeted therapies for cancer. Many patients will respond differently from each other. The research that I'm doing uh, is developing new mathematical approaches to better understand the right combinations for individual patients. Traditionally, we've had two fields. Uh, we've had pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, and then in parallel with systems biology. And those two fields have really developed in parallel. The University of Buffalo is well known for their excellence in pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. With with systems biology, these network-based approaches are discovering the connections of all of the different components within the body, starting with the genes, proteins, and metabolites. So what we're thinking through now is how to combine these two fields and to come up with more detailed mathematical models of how drugs work alone and in combination with other agents. So these new models with all that additional detail will allow us to start to pick rational combination therapy. It should also help us to uh, deal with uh, complexities of, of therapy in cancer, such as adverse drug effects, as well as uh, resistance mechanisms that often uh, occur uh, in this patient population. We've been in existence for over 50 years for our research and training program. 
we have graduates who work in the pharmaceutical industry, the Food and Drug Administration, and in many other academic institutes. We offer special courses every year, not only for our own students, but for visitors who come from all over the world. Every May or June, I put on my special cap, and we entertain visitors in Niagara Falls where we give three-day courses in various aspects of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. We think our future is bright. Mathematical modeling and pharmacometrics is, is a growth area in pharmaceutical sciences. Our interest in cancer therapeutics and in protein therapeutics is part of the frontier area of needing and developing new drugs. So we have broad capabilities in research and we think we'll continue with great success.